And the overall cost of a wind turbine is determined by manufacturing cost, the amount of captured energy, cost of site preparation, installation, ongoing maintenance, and also financing cost. And please keep in mind that the unit of measuring cost is basically the cost, but per one kilowatt hour. That's how we weight a project from a cost point of view. Not if it's uh, cheap or expensive. Is it economical from a cost kilowatt or not economical from a cost kilowatt? The cost benefit. This particular pie chart demonstrate life cycle operational aspect. And this is just an example. The large green area of the pie chart is 82.7% of generation of electricity. So if we have 100% of the time of the turbine operated, 82.7% it will actually generate. But the problem is the rest of the percentages to the 100. Reserve shutdown of 10.3%. And we have reserve shutdown because of wind, 4%. The 4% is the amount of time that the wind is below cutting speed or above the cutout speed. So that's 4% of the time. 10% of the time is because of reserved shutdown due to environmental problems, utility problems, community problems, mechanical problem. The schedule maintenance is only 0.4%. That low figure represents very high reliable system. If only 0.4% is scheduled maintenance, preventing, preventive maintenance, that means the system as a whole, by its nature, is a very reliable system. And indeed it is. 1.4% is unscheduled maintenance because of system breakdown. Forced outage and unavailability is 1.1%. All other reasons why a system will not work. Technical, not technical. Administrative, not administrative. But it's only 1.1%. So 82.7% is a pretty good number for system to generate electricity over the entire year. And if we evaluate the system breakdown cost, which component actually breaks, we can see that rotor blades uh, contribute 20% to, this, to the breakdown cost. The tower itself is 25%. So the tower itself contributes more than the rotor blades to the breakdown cost. The nickel components and balance of, point, of, of plant is 35 points. This is where the more sophisticated systems rely. They are there in the nickel. The generator, the brakes, all the control system. The gear, the gearbox, all is there in the nickel. So it's 35% compared to 20% of the rotor blades. Rotor blades are very reliable devices. Now, the generator itself is 11%. In large HAWT farms, generator is a huge machine. And it breaks down. And when it breaks down, it's very, very costly to repair it. The power converter is only 4%. Uh, pitch in your bearings, the control is 2%. This is minor. Rotor, tower, and other nuclear components are the majority of the breakdown cost. And now we're showing an offshore project cost as a total. What's typical? The project cost the offshore, out of the 100% of the total cost, the turbine is only 39%. Only about 40% of the total project cost is the turbine itself. 
The foundation down there here, we see 21%. Especially in offshore, it's very costly, the, the subject, the matter of foundation. Out there, in some kilometers offshore, when the seabed is 50 meters down, and we need to install a huge long tower in the seabed, Later on in the in session, we'll see different techniques how to fix, locate this tower in seabed. But it's a tremendously costly activity. Cables, it's 9%. It's electrical cables that transmit uh, the, the electrical energy to the shore. Project management, 7%. Onshore preparation to receive the electricity coming from the offshore project. 7%. We need a station right there. So turbine is only 40%. All what we see is only 40% of the things we don't see. And now we analyze in general terms, just as an example, the downtime distribution of a turbine. Gearbox is 25%. Gearbox tw uh, contributes 25% to the downtime of the turbine itself. The reason, by the way, that it's so much, 25%, is because there are uh, variations in the wind speed and the wind power. That means that the turbine have what you call hiccups. They are not rotating smoothly and softly in a fixed RPM. They're vibrating. That creates damage wear and tear to the gearbox itself. The generator contributes 18% to the downtime. The, the main shaft and the bearing 17%. The rotor itself is only 15%. And then comes the next of the subsystems. So when it, when it comes to downtime distribution, Rotor, main shaft and bearing, gearbox and generator. The electronics and the sensors and other small uh, control systems, yo, pitch, we'll, we'll talk about it later, contribute very little. 